All right, what's up guys? Happy Monday. Uh, tonight is the spear tube shark. So um, we got some like, really cool follow up too, but I think the biggest thing on my right mind right now is, hey Howard, what's up? What's up? It's good to see you. Um, I was just about to say, uh, I picked out, so this is a big week for, hey World's Up, uh, so it's a big week for uh, Legend of Zelda, I don't know if you guys uh, play those games, those games but the newest, the newest game, uh, Tears of the Kingdom, Kingdom is coming out, coming out Friday, Friday, which I'm really excited about, about. so I picked some Zelda music, music, music for tonight, but I may, but I may have made a mistake in the sense that this is a very, very relaxing point where, um, let me know. Let me know if it's sleeping. Sleep 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 so. um, I did. I did. I, I, I wanted to like chill, 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 but, um, and also let me know if the music is like too relaxing. Um, cause it's like, I wanted cool study music, but I didn't want something too sleepy because this is a really exciting shark to talk about tonight. This is the spear tooth shark, uh, which is one of the rarest sharks in the world. Um, it is a kind of river shark. Oh shoot, fuzzy. Hmm. I wonder if there's anything I could do about that. Uh, let me maybe shut, let's, Turn this off really quick. Let's see. Is that better? Does that make a difference right there? And a bit buzzy. Uh oh. Shoot. Let's see. I don't think it's my mic. Do 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 do. Can you guys hear me okay? Let's see. Audio is good now. Okay. So maybe, yeah, maybe the Tears of the Kingdom music, or sorry, the Zelda music was too much. So, <laughs> um, uh, uh, let's go back to, let's just go back to Civ 3, uh, cause that always, that always is like, you know, that's a good backup. So we'll just, we'll just slap that on. Uh, it's probably better for the shark anyway. Okay. Can you guys uh, still hear me okay? Uh, just let me know before we get started. I got some really cool video. Uh, and also, how you guys been? How, how's the week been? Because uh, I have some interesting update, uh, or not an update, I guess, like an interesting like uh, thing happened on the channel. So, um, and let me know if the audio is okay now. But uh, our last video, okay, cool, cool. Thank you. Um, so our last video, the Angular Rough Shark, and we, we still have like a really small group. Um, so, you know, just like, I'm not like freaking out. I mean, in terms of like, you know, it's it's still like by YouTube standards, like the, the viewership is still really small, but the last video got a lot more views than, than the other ones. Uh, so something about the Angular Rough Shark uh, really like hit, hit the algorithm compared to the other ones, which is really cool. Um, Oh, hey, I'm going to do some, Roro, I'm going to do some Ride Operator next week, so I've been studying a bit. Oh, cool, what, what is that? Like, uh, Ride op. oh, you mean like, like, like for like a roller coaster, or, that's really cool, is this like a, a park, um, like, like in Canada? I actually don't know any, um, and let me know if that's, that's not at all what it is, but, <laughs> um, I don't think I know any Canadian, uh, theme parks, um. I even I don't even know some of the American ones in terms of like you know because like the most famous is Disney um, and we have Bush Gardens but and but there's like a bunch more that like uh, Roy Roy uh, very busy just received an, an undescribed tooth attributed to Kynogalius interesting Canada's Wonderland and Kynogalius Inter wait hold on I want I want to look both of these up I'm very curious so Canada's Wonderland amusement park in Ontario. That looks cool. I don't know. I don't know if I've ever told you guys this. Like, I am extremely afraid of heights. So I, like, I, I can do scuba diving. I'm fine, fine with depth. That is fine. But like roller coasters and anything high, no bueno. I'm like freak. I freak out. I, I, <laughs> my friends, I they can get me on a ride and everything, but like I freak out, dude. But that looks really cool. Um, let's look up Kynogalius. Kynogalius. 
I'm actually kind of glad uh, the Zelda music didn't work out because this is this is more like River Shark music. I feel. Oh, interesting. Hooktooth Shark. Interesting. Uh, let's look up Kinogalia's tooth. This is like I feel. I feel like River Sharks. Um, and that's my bad. I I, I should have probably vetted the music more. Um, cause like I feel like River Sharks they deserve. Oh wow! Wait a minute. Uh, Howard, do you have a fossil tooth or a living tooth? I didn't realize we had living Kynogalius. Kynogalius macrostoma. Interesting. Coasters are great. Oh, nice. <laughs> oh, man. What's the craziest roller coaster you guys have been on? Um, like, for for me, there's a... Um, so, I'm really... Like, like I'm pretty close to Busch Gardens Williamsburg. And there is a ride there. It's Alpengeist. And uh, every Halloween, Busch Gardens Williamsburg does, like, Hallow Scream. Uh, which is, like... It's actually really cool. They turn a lot of the attractions into haunted houses. Um, and it actually, I feel like Hallow Scream really ramps Busch Gardens up. So, it's a lot of fun. Um, all the haunted houses have, like, a different theme. Um, but you can also ride the roller coasters at night. So, like, my best friend and I, just last year, uh, she and I went to, uh, or no, was it last year? I guess it was two years ago now. We went to Hallow Scream and did one of the night coasters, the Alpengeist, which is one of the worst ones there. And, man, I was freaking out. I just, ah, uh, ah, uh, I didn't, I didn't, I made noises I didn't even know I could make. I just, I was freaking out, man. Uh, Fossil Kynogalius. Interesting. Let's see. So I actually did not know. So Kanagelius is the hook tooth shark. I didn't quite know that we had a living one. Kanagelius fossil tooth. Oh, that's really cool. Um, do you know where the provenience is? Do you know where the tooth came from? Um, like, like what what location it was discovered in? Oh, wait a minute. This is like. That's sort of. Wait a minute. That almost looks like, that kind of looks like uh, Snaggletooth a little bit. Like, like there's something similar about the morphology a little bit. Like, I mean, I guess like the back half, the front half is completely smooth. This is so interesting. Do you know, um, Howard, like, if kind of, like, Kynogalius and um, Hemipristus, do, are they the behemoth Alpen guy? <laughs> yeah. Do you know if Kynogalius and, oh, Morocco, interesting. You know, um, do Kynogalius and Hemipristus, do they have a sort of similar, uh, like, family or ancestry? Kind of like how Carcadon, or Carcadon and Carcocles, they're not the same, they're not that close, but... Oh, Eocene, uh, 34 to 56 million years ago, interesting. That is really cool, that is a really cool find. Uh, the Behemoth. Uh, I do want to look up this roller coaster. So I'm kind of split focused. I, I think I get a delay in the chat. So, Behemoth roller coaster. So if I seem like crazy, like going back and forth, that's that's why. There's a little bit of delay. Oh, whoa, no! <laughs> that looks so scary, man. Oh no! Oh, this is and oh, just oh, that looks scary. Uh, yeah. You, you are braver than I, as far as heights go. That's too scary. I, no, pass. Pass, 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 pass. I, I'll take depth. I'll take depth. So, I will take subs or something. I will not take height, so. <laughs> but, that is really cool. Um, Behemoth's like the third tallest roller coaster in the park. Um, looks like a mix between Tiger Shark and Carmen Cockerinid. Yeah, isn't it interesting? They're all Hemigalias, includes Paragalias and Hemigalias. Interesting, okay. That is really, really interesting. Um, I really like... Uh, uh, so, so uh, to Roy's point, like, I do like how... Yeah, that back half does look like a, a Galliocerto tooth a little bit. Um, and it it's not a heart shape, but it is kind of like that interior curve. Uh, or no, posterior... I guess posterior curve. Um, but, and, but it's really interesting that the interior is very smooth and the posterior has, like, these serrations. So that's really cool. So... Um, Speaking of unique tooth morphology, the spear tooth shark, um, so tonight's shark, uh, that, uh, the namesake of this is uh, this pretty unique dentition on the bottom. I'm really excited to be talking about the shark tonight. Where, where is this? Because, there we go. 
There we go. So check these teeth out. I wonder if I can get... So this... Most people mistakenly say bull sharks are the only shark that can enter fresh water, when in reality it's going to be... Um, there's actually, I guess technically it's four species now. There are four species of shark that actually, uh, as far as I know, that can actually do that, like do full fresh water. So it's the bull shark and these three glyphus sharks. Um, so this one being glyphus glyphus, uh, the spear tube shark. Now I believe there were actually five glyphus species at one point, but two of them have been recently reclassified as Glyphus janganticus. So um, it's, it's such a rare group and uh, there's still so much more we need to learn about it that um, I think there's a lot of back and forth on the taxonomy. But this is a really interesting tooth morphology. Um, like you have these like beautiful, like almost perfect, perfectly triangular teeth, almost like a white shark tooth um, or like a mako shark uh, in the top row. Um, and then the bottom row, you've got these, like, really long, like, you know, I mean, like, spears, like, uh, you know, hence the namesake. So, um, what I really like about this jaw set is you can see some physis right there. Um, some physis being, like, the little, uh, the small tooth right in the middle between the, um, uh, the two sides of the jaw. So, um, that's pretty unique morphology. Uh, let me catch up on the comments. Yes. Um, oh, let's see. Yes, uh, Roy Roy, uh, they do look extremely close to bull sharks. Yes, I noticed that too. That that really blows my mind because uh, it's it's a, and I'm actually kind of curious. Um, I have no idea, but like like I'm so curious. Like, I would love if there was research about like you know, is there any relation? I I, I, I don't I don't think Glyphus is related. Like 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 they're both in the same family, but I don't think um, Glyphus is like an offshoot of bull sharks but then again ph physiologically it looks so close you have the tiny eyes um if you look at the body plan it's a pretty stocky animal um the snout is maybe a little bit longer than the bull shark uh, probably the biggest difference i can see is like the dorsal fin uh bull sharks have more of like a triangular like like a uh, almost kind of like a I'm trying to think of the right word, like a more of a perfect triangle, like an even triangle with a semi, like like a little bit of a concave curve. And this species, Glyphus glyphus, the dorsal fin is a lot more elongate. It's more like a flat triangle. I wish I remember my triangles, like isosceles and whatever. I forget which one is which, but um, now well, let's see. This is so dumb. Isosceles. <laughs> which one is that again? I don't know. Yeah. Flat isosceles? Sure. Two sides of equal length? No. Okay. I'm gonna stop because it's it's I. I'm gonna mess up and I'm gonna I'm gonna piss off uh, geometry people. But anyway, um, but yeah, the biggest thing I notice is like uh, the the first dorsal fin is a lot um, broader than a bull shark's. Um, the pectoral fin is actually quite a bit shorter too because uh, bull sharks have much longer pectoral fins. Um, and then I would say the second dorsal fin on this species is higher uh, than a bull shark. I think a bull shark's second dorsal fin is a bit smaller. The caudal fin looks pretty similar though. Um, and then overall, just general body plan, it's really interesting. Cause like, I definitely, I definitely agree with you, Roy, that like, they do look like, like I think they do look similar in the sense that it's a stocky animal, tiny eyes, and it inhabits a very similar niche. Um, so it's, it's just, it's, it's such a weird, like, and it's it's so interesting, like like how they overlap in some ways, and yet they have some distinctions. Like the snout is much pointier, the teeth are you know very distinct. Um, like the those lower teeth in particular are really really distinct. But um, let's see, uh, Howard, very reminiscent of mako dentition. Yeah, like the top teeth. Um, oh, actually, yeah, actually, yeah, good point. Uh, both the top and the bottom, because makos makos have like inward curving teeth. These look like kind of straight but i'm curious if the function might be you know fairly similar whereas like the top teeth are like shearing teeth and then the bottom teeth are like spearing teeth um to like hold on to fish um so bull shark is a very traditional pointy dorsal fin while glyphus is very wide triangular fins yes so yeah that's i, I totally agree with that um so but it, it is fascinating like i the, the small eyes in particular is something that stands out to me it's like you know, maybe this is an adaptation for those kinds of environments uh, where, you know, they're, when you think about like that kind of water being so turbid, 
um, maybe you don't really need to rely on your eyes as much. So I don't know. It's going to be interesting to um, discover more as we dive into the species. So there's not a lot of footage of Glyphus, but I did get to, um, I did find one po uh, sorry, um, video from Cairns Marine. So actually, let me go ahead and subscribe to Cairns Marine. Hold on, because this is actually, this is kind of mind blowing that they have this. So let's go ahead and subscribe. Cairns Marine. So, um, but these are actually like, uh, I think this is the only video I've ever seen of Glyphus species um, in life. I don't think I've ever seen another Eclipoglyphus. I think we're actually, uh, River Monsters might have done something with Glyphus, but um, this is going to be really cool time. This is only represent species. <laughs> Check it out. Look at these guys. Oh, this is so cool. I mean, you know what? Like, even in motion, I mean, that looks so much like a bull shark, you know? Um, you could definitely, you could definitely tell the distinctions again, that the two dorsal fins, the first one being so much longer, um, and then the second one being much larger than a bull sharks. And then again, the snout is much more pointed, uh, much more elongate. But then again, like, I mean, in profile, it does look so much like it, which is so weird. I'm noticing too, that the, uh, pelvic fins are actually a bit bigger too, uh, relative to the shark's body size. So... Wow, these are so cool. I like how, um, you know, they're, for the most part, patrolling the bottom of the tank. Uh, so they're kind of sticking close to the bottom as opposed to being higher in the water column. I think it's pretty interesting. I don't know if that's something they're doing just in this specific environment, um, or if this is something that's kind of more like their comfort zone. So, but... Check it out. Can you imagine these being like, like if you, if you're on, um, I think they live in Australia and I think parts of Indonesia and like somewhere in rivers, uh, in, in their range, you know, this is like at, on the bottom of the riverbed. This is so cool. Man, these are cool. So river sharks, um, we've talked about before they they are uh highly endangered it's a highly endangered group uh i think iucm redlist is actually classifying this species glyphus glyphus as vulnerable which i'm a little bit surprised by and i'd like to dive into that more um let's catch up on comments and then we'll we'll, re we'll replay that again as a kind of read from sharks of the world uh but just want to catch up Let's see, they probably live in very murky water, so eyesight might be out of the question for them. Yeah, no, good point, good point. I think I think that's very valid. Um, <laughs> these are so cool. Um, and it's, it's such a... As we dive in tonight, I'm very curious to see how much... Like, like if there's any kind of, like, observations on those features, like the tiny eyes, the broad... The larger fins, proportionally larger fins, dorsal fins, pelvic fins... Um, to the body size, like I'm curious how much of that relates to um, their uh, behavior um, and their niche. So, I mean, it always relates, but I'm curious, like, how specifically it relates. So, I'm gonna take a peek at sharks of the world for Glyphus Glyphus, the spear tooth shark. So, let's see what we got here. So, occurs in turbid freshwater rivers, estuaries, and adjacent coastal waters. The behavior is unknown this is a very rare species so um viviparous uh, litters of six to seven pups in northern australia newborns are common in some rivers from october to december which is australian summer so uh feeds on bony fishes and crustaceans let's see this is interesting so shark uh, sharks of the world is saying that this is actually an endangered species Known for over a century from a single museum specimen, it appears to be restricted to river systems in northern Australia and Papua New Guinea. Uh, the latter habits, uh, habitats face significant development and exploitation pressure. Extremely rare. So this is probably definitely one of the rarest sharks we've ever seen. Um, maybe 
possibly the rarest. I can't think off the top of my head on our streams like how many like like something that might be rarer than this. So, um, it's pretty wild to think about. Um, for river sharks in general, uh, the Indo-West Pacific river sharks are rare, poorly known, and difficult to identify. Specimens and good photographs of whole animals, measurements, jaws, and teeth, and ideally vertebral counts, are essential for confirmation. Only th three species in the genus are valid. Previously, five species have been named, but two have been synom synonymized with Glyphus gigantecus based on new molecular and morphological data. Unidentified Glyphus sharks are also reported from rivers in Malaysian Borneo and central Kalimantan. These may be another species or here... Uh, hitherto unknown populations of Glyphus jangeticus. So interesting. This is wild. So right now, only three species of valid river sharks. Um, and I'm curious if, uh, since this is Glyphus glyphus, I'm curious if this might be like the type, like the main, or the, the, the it's probably the one that established the genus. So this is so cool. Are they completely freshwater? I so I don't think they are completely freshwater. Um, let me catch up on some questions. Here we go. So um, I'm guessing they probably live in rather brackish water at best. So I think they do the full spectrum, but that includes pure freshwater, just like a bull shark. So I think they do fresh, brackish, and coastal, uh, which is still wild because um, there's a lot of sharks that do enter estuaries like dogfish can do it um, smooth hounds can do it um, but as far as like actual fresh water this is one of the very few sharks that can actually do that because um, like uh, again bull sharks are always described as the only freshwater shark but i believe these river sharks also can claim that title like these can be I, i'm pretty sure these can enter pure fresh water uh, we'll confirm that as as we as we keep studying but it'd be it'd be interesting to uh, know how they adapt to fresh water believe they go far up river yes so i think i think you're right howard that they do go far up river um i'm curious about that adaptation too because i know that bull sharks uh it's something to do with how they osmoregulate and part of it is like um oh gosh it's a really complicated process but i think part of it is like there's a weird <laughs> way in which it's something to it's something to do with the shark's urine, um, and we're like like I'm pretty sure it's something to do with that, where it's able to like, oh man, I forget how it does it, but I think it's able. Unlike other sharks, bull sharks are able to retain more of. Uh, I don't I don't want to get this wrong, because um, like most other sharks and most fish cannot osmoregulate well between freshwater and salt water. Uh, but bull sharks have something in their metabolism where they're able to like process that and I believe it is something to do with their urine and I forget exactly what it was um, that they're able to quickly excrete salt um, and adjust their bodies to uh, more of a freshwater environment and, and adjust the salt count in their body to more closely match their environment um, which is very absolutely unique among sharks and again bull sharks are insane like they go from zero parts per thousand, which is fresh water, to 50 parts per thousand, which is like beyond salt water. Like it is one of the toughest animals out there. So I'm curious if they, if I'm sure like these sharks probably have something similar going on. Um, and I hope there's a better explanation than what I just gave in terms of like what the process is. So let's dive in um, to, let's see. I found a couple Australian websites, uh, and I feel like they probably be a good be a good place to start. So let's do, we'll start with Atlas of Living Australia. Um, so, whoa. Oh, you know what? Okay, so this is interesting. So uh, I just realized Glyphus Glyphus is named at, um, named by Mueller and Onlay, 1839. And Miller and Lay are the first, um, or they're the authors of bull sharks as well. So that's actually kind of wild that uh, these scientists named both Carcharinus lucas and Glyphus glyphus. It's actually really mind blowing. Um, so let's see. Um, conservation status Australia critically endangered, NT vulnerable. I'm assuming that's, I don't know what that means actually. I don't think I've ever seen that kind of assignment, so... Put 
Apology pouring, poorly known. Okay, spirit tooth shark, rare species of river shark belong to the family Carcharinidae, coastal marine waters, and tidal reaches of large tropical rivers in northern Australia and New Guinea. Despite being a member of the river shark genus, it is also found in nearshore marine waters, favoring highly turbid environments over a wide range of salinities. This robustly built, gray colored shark is characterized by a short and broad snout, tiny eyes, and a relatively large second dorsal fin, and a black blotch uh, beneath each pectoral fin near the tip. I did not notice that, actually. Do we have. I guess we don't have that in this photo, so. Another identif identifying trait is the teeth, which are large, triangular, and serrated in the upper jaw, and narrow, spear-like, and serrated only near the tips in the lower jaw. Um, adults grow to about 2.6 meters, or 8.5 feet long. So that's pretty big shark. That's, um, kind of feel like that's comparable to a sandbar shark a little bit, so. Preying on demersal bony fishes and crustaceans, spear tree shark is adapted for hunting in near complete darkness. So good call, Roy. Yeah, near complete darkness. So it doesn't really use its eyes as much. So which is yeah, which is why they're tiny. Interesting. It's not as active as other requiem sharks, moving upstream and downstream with tidal currents so as to save energy. Well, that's cool. Interesting. Upstream and downstream with tidal currents. Very very interesting. So this is a shark with the tides. Really cool. Uh, reproduction is viviparous with females forming a placental collection to your young, though details are unknown. That's very similar to bull sharks. Uh, the spear tube shark is threatened by incidental capture in commercial and recreational fisheries, as well as by habitat degradation. Given its small population, restricted range, and stringent habitat requirements, the species is highly susceptible to these pressures and has been listed as vulnerable by the in International Union for Conservation Nature. This is really interesting. There's a lot of um, discrepancies uh, because this is saying IUCN IUCN is saying vulnerable um, in Australia it's critically endangered and then in Sharks of the World which is like a no-nonsense book Sharks of the World is a legitimately awesome book um, it's saying it's endangered so this is a little interesting that there's a lot of just discrepancy in terms of like how it's doing so um, here we go kind of curious I won't read this out loud but I'm kind of curious why like what Miller and Lay were doing. Interesting. Miller and Lay's type specimen remained the sole known record of the spear tooth shark until specimens of the Byzant River shark were caught in Australia in 1982. <laughs> That's nuts. That's over a century. That is really weird. Oh. Wow. Uh, subsequently, work by over, uh, by Leonard Compagno, or Compagno, uh, William White, and Peter Lass confirmed initial suspicions that species A was the same species as Glyphus glyphus. Thus, in Australia, the shark may also be referred to as the Byzant River Shark or the Queensland River Shark. Very cool. Distribution and habitat. Uh, juvenile subadult spear tooth sharks are found in a few large mangrove lined tropical rivers in northern Australia and New Guinea from the estuary to hundreds of kilometers upstream. A single possible record from the South China Sea exists. Interesting. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Ooh, in the Northern Territory, it is known from the Adelaide River and the Alligator Rivers. So, um, really random, but uh, <laughs> one of my favorite podcasts uh, ever is uh, Hello Internet, and uh, the co-host, uh, Brady Horan, always talks about Adelaide, so shout out to Adelaide if Brady Rand ever watches anything remotely related to this video. Just want to do a shout out to the awesome work he's done. He's actually an amazing YouTuber um, in his own right, just doing chemistry videos, so uh, I think periodic videos is his um, biggest thing. He also does like number file, and um, but Hello Internet is my favorite thing. So uh, Adelaide's one of Adelaide's most famous sons, so <laughs> but anyway. Uh, river shark in the Order of Western Australia may also be of the species. Do, 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 do. Ooh, newborn to subadult spear tooth sharks exclusively inhabit areas with fast tidal currents and muddy bottoms. The flowing water produces heavy turbidity, such as that salinity levels of these waters range from nearly fresh, 0 0.8 parts per thousand, cool, to nearly marine, 28 parts per thousand. So, um, awesome. So I always, I think, I forget what the exact cutoff is for actual seawater. I think it was 35 parts per thousand. Let me make sure I got that right. 
seawater. Because what's interesting is, like, no matter where you are on the ocean... Okay, it is 35. There we go. So, uh, we've talked about Selenium before. Um, I'm, I'm always, like, a Selenium nerd. I think it's really interesting. Um, so, no matter where you are in the ocean, like, the main ocean, like, the open ocean, or, like, the coast, the coast um, it's always going to be 35 parts per thousand. Um, unless you're near river mouths, or, um, like, unless you're near areas with, like, freshwater discharge. Uh, like, like th that's... It's the ocean is surprisingly relatively uniform as far as salinity goes and 35 is that number so when you think of salinity um, that scale between 0 and 35 is kind of what you're looking at um, so like like it's it's because uh, it's, it's 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 kind of like a weird scale I wish there was more like a 0 to 100 thing or like a, a 1 to 10 thing uh, 0 to 35 is kind of awkward but anyway I mean that that's what it is as far as salinity goes so excuse me uh, but actually, when you think about that, and when you think of that, bull sharks can go into 50 parts per thousand. Like again, it's breaking that 35 uh, open ocean thing. It's just it's just wild. But I'm kind of rambling at that point. Um, temperatures range from 25 to 33 degrees Celsius. So it's pretty warm water. Uh, younger sharks are generally found further upstream than older ones. Uh, oh, interesting. I guess that makes sense. I'm gonna guess. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Um, Further upstream, probably less predators uh, because of the lower salinity, uh, probably less competition, uh, probably lower biodiversity, I would think. Uh, m much less major predators as far as sharks go. I don't really know um, crocodilians that well in um, Australia, in this part of Australia. I don't really know what kind of competition might happen there, um, but I, that's probably the only thing I could think of that as a major predator. Um, but... I'm guessing that maybe the young, younger sharks um, have less predators and less competition upstream as opposed to getting closer to the ocean where you're more likely to run into bigger predators. That's kind of my guess. That's how estuaries tend to work. So uh, catching up on comments. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Ooh, interesting. Um, I know the xenocanthids, uh, so Howard, uh, I know the xenocanthids in the Permian, but I'm not too sure about later freshwater sharks during the Jurassic and Cretaceous. Interesting. I didn't even know, um, it's kind of amazing that there's freshwater sharks, uh, like fossil freshwater sharks. It makes sense, but like, I, I didn't, I didn't know off the top of my head what those were. So that's actually really cool. Less predators and more food. Yeah, I think, I think, I think that's, that's the game, you know, for the most part, which is really cool. Um, like, and it's actually, it, it's kind of amazing, um, this is a totally different part of the world, but, um, it's, it is like the Chesapeake Bay, like, like, that's sort of the same gist of it, you know, where it's, like, less biodiversity, like, as far, like, relative to, like, to the ocean, it's less biodiversity the further upriver you go, the less predators, um, it's kind of amazing, it's actually really cool that there's sort of this, not uniformity, but there's this kind of, like, you can kind of make a prediction, you know, like if you're in a different part of the world and in like in a different river, um, you can probably suspect like less less dangerous marine things upriver as opposed to like downriver. It's kind of interesting. So um, that reminds me of Jurassic Park three. I, I don't know. I don't know if you guys seen Jurassic Park three, but um, one of the characters I forget who it was is like the big dinosaurs are in the center of the island, and like the other ones are on the outside of the island. I forget. I don't know. I was just thinking about that movie. I was actually thinking about that movie quite a lot today. You know, it's it's a fun romp. It's it's not a masterpiece, but it's it's fun. So, um, let's see. Where was I? We're talking about salinity, younger sharks. A study that tracked three individuals in the Adelaide River reported that they moved upstream with the flooding tide and downstream with the ebbing tide. It's really cool. Um, the average swimming depth was determined uh, for one individual to be 7.7 .7 meters in the middle of the water column. Okay, so I got that wrong as far as the tank goes. Um, so it looks like they like to be in the middle as opposed to the, the seabed. Um, interesting. Adults were entirely unknown until 2014 when three specimens, two males and one female, were documented by scientists uh, visiting fishing villages on Daru Island, Papua New Guinea. All three were caught in coastal waters off the island. No evidence exists of segregation by sex. Okay, that's crazy. 2014. Dude, that was my graduation year. That's nuts. <laughs> like, that's 
that's really wild. Man. Also, um, I think I, I might have talked about this last stream, but it, 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 it still blows my mind how much uh, more information there is out there now. Like, like, because 2014 is not even a decade ago. And, I mean, it, like, the, the landscape on shark information online has completely changed for the better. Like, there's, there's a lot more available and there's a lot more publicly available and a lot more out there. So, um, that's really a nice thing because when I was a college student, I was really looking for more things to learn. And, um, you know, I was having trouble finding exactly what I wanted, and it's cool to see that, like, yeah, you know, there's there's a lot of resources online, um, and it's gotten better, so. Description. Let's see. I saw Jurassic 3. <laughs> Um, imagine they start swimming up river, uh, to birth young and gradually acclimatize. Interesting. That's a good guess, Howard. Yeah. Uh, that, um, that's a good guess, actually. That's really cool. I, I wonder, I wonder, let's, let's see, um, I wonder if we'll be able to kind of confirm that. Um, so just to kind of, re, uh, restate that. I imagine they start swimming up river to birth young and gradually acclimatize. That's actually really cool. So let's see. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Oh, interesting. Without any known adult specimens, the maximum size of species has historically been labeled with considerable uncertainty. Doo -doo 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 -doo. 2014, the first known adults were documented, and on this basis, it reaches a length of about, uh, oh, like the 8.5 feet. Interesting. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Yeah, it's a small equivalent to contain membranes. And I, I won't read everything out loud. I just, um, I'm just kind of scanning. There are five pairs of gill slits with the first pair longer than the others. Kind of curious if we could see that maybe in the footage. Probably better maybe to get a photo, but. Oh yeah, you can kind of see that. Um, I wonder what the advantage is of that having, because um, I think, I think most sharks, at least most carcharinids, the gill slits are pretty equal in size. Yeah. Uh, maybe I, maybe I should get a photo because you can sort of see it. And, yeah. Yeah. There you go. That's actually really cool. You can kind of see it, um, like the, the first pair of gill slits are like larger than the rest. I wonder, I wonder uh, why that is. Interesting. So, I'm so glad we have this, by the way. This is really, really, this is a real treat. You know, one of the rarest sharks in the world. <laughs> and like, you know, there's actual video footage of it. That's pretty wild. Unbelievable. So, so cool. All right, let's go back. Second so dorsal fin set. Interesting. There is no midline ridge between the dorsal fins, um, and I think bull sharks are like that too. Um, and conversely, so. Uh, that, that whole interdorsal ridge, it, it's really helpful for um, at least Carcharhinus um, and many Carcharhinids. Um, it, it's kind of like when you get to this family, um, this whole talk of an interdorsal ridge becomes really important. So um, car uh, bull sharks don't have it either, which is kind of cool to see. Um, those are two species that have a similar niche, and um, it's interesting that they, they don't have the ridge either. Um, sandbar sharks do have the ridge, so it's interesting. Uh, Let's see. Do, 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 do. The body is covered by small overlapping oval shaped dermal denticles bearing three or five horizontal ridges leading to marginal teeth. A uh, species is plain slate gray above, including the upper surfaces of the pectoral and pelvic fins. That's actually. I don't, I don't know how. I mean, I guess that's just basic counter shading because. Um, Similarly, bull sharks, same coloration, like just 
nothing really fancy, just, you know, gray above, white below. Do, 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 do. The eyes are ringed in white. Oh. I just want to check that really quick. Oh, you can kind of see it in this photo. Hey, Bruce! Welcome to the stream, man! Um, sorry, I just noticed the comments. Uh, you're more than welcome. Um, I'm, uh, let's see, are there any other species that lack it? Uh, lack... Um, lack uh, the... Uh, wh which feature, specifically? Um, and also, welcome! Uh, wh wh uh, if you don't mind me asking, uh, wh where are you, where are you um, from? And uh, j just, like, country speaking. The Ridge, gotcha. Okay. Um, so... That's a good question. Let's see if we can look that up. Because, yes, there, there are a bunch of Carcharhinids that do lack it. Um, Carcharhinus interdorsal ridge. I'm really hoping we could find, like, a really cool, like, dichotomous key. Because um, it, it is such a helpful thing. Um, uh, let's see. Maybe we can... I, I just want to find like a chart comparing. I, I guess these might help. Let's see. I really want to find like a chart comparing them. Um, comparing different Carcharhinus. Let's see. Okay, we'll, we'll just click on these. Um, I think these, uh, what we're seeing right here, these are snapshots from um, FAO or Food and Agricultural. Um, uh, what do you call it? Association of the United Nations. These are these are helpful shark guides for fishermen. So we'll we'll just kind of click on these and check, because um, they're gonna they're gonna identify whether or not these carcharhinus have the dorsal ridge. So um, so this species does. It's I don't think it's carcharhinus altimus is big nose shark. So it's saying big nose sharks have the ridge. Um, this guy is a silky shark. It, silky sharks have the ridge too. Okay. Um, Let's see. I know sandbar sharks have the ridge. This is a sandbar shark, Carcharhinus plumbius. I'm actually really curious. I don't really know off the top of my head who doesn't, aside from bull sharks, I'm kind of curious who doesn't have the ridge. Uh, Longamanus is the oceanic white tip. It has a ridge as well. Uh, black tip. There we go. Okay, check it out. So black tip shark, uh, Carcharhinus limbatus, uh, which overlaps uh, the bull shark's range in a lot of areas. Um, it does not have an interdorsal ridge, so this is a smooth back shark. Um, let's keep going. I'm actually really curious. This is this is good practice for me, too, actually. Uh, Carcharhinus amblyrhynchos is the gray reef shark. Uh, it's saying it usually has no interdorsal ridge. Okay, so as far as smooth back sharks, bull, black tip, gray reef. We'll do a couple more, because I'm actually really curious. Good question. Thank you. Thank you for asking. Because it's um, this is really good. It's actually really good training. If 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 anybody wants to be a shark scientist, like uh, that's really good training. Just knowing your ridgeback sharks versus your smooth back sharks. Uh, Galapagos shark, Carcharhinus galapagensis, a low interdorsal ridge. So it looks like most of the Carcharhinus probably do have the ridge. Um, we'll do. We already talked about silky shark. Let's see if we can find maybe one more. This is a fun rabbit hole, so... Uh, I, I, I think we won't get, get one, one more picture. picture. Yeah, yeah, I think we probably, probably, probably covered the layers. layers. Uh, what's this? What's this? Well, it's probably, it's probably, 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 probably covered all covered the whole layers, layers as far as, as, far as, as Kirk Rhinos goes. goes. But, but good question, question, that's question, a really good question. question. Thank, thank, you, thank you for asking. Um, um, let's go let's back, back to, I think we're on description for the river shark. So, Oh, shoot, sorry guys. Can you hear me okay? That sometimes happens if I kind of get a little crazy with people, like with the audio. Um... So, so let me know if it's okay. I'm just gonna catch up on the comments. Uh, do 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 do. 
Oh man, there's a lot of comments I gotta catch up on actually. <laughs> Hold on. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Oh, thank you! Uh, Bruce, thank you, man. Uh, so from Vancouver, fellow Canadian, what's up? Uh, well, not fellow Canadian, I'm an, I'm an American, but um, most of our stream is actually Canadian. Uh, thank you for being a huge, a big fan of the channel. That really, that really made my day. Really appreciate it. Um, I've been doing this fun thing. Um, so for the streams, uh, if there's a new country, I'm going to add a flag. Uh, but we have the, the great nation of Canada represented here. So thank you guys. I, I really appreciate you guys being here. Um, and uh, it's fun. Like, like. Uh, our, our two nations proudly, proudly are represented in the streams. So, <laughs> um, do, 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 do. let's see. Uh, come out Hornby Island. Blue sharks are like the rich too. Go catch Roy. Yeah. Is it, is the audio back guys? Um, I think there's a delay on my end, but just let me know. Um, I'll keep going through the description on river sharks, uh, or sorry, this uh, the uh, spear tube shark. So, oh sweet, awesome, thanks, Bruce. Uh, audio is back to normal. So yeah, sorry, it, it, that's a bandwidth thing on my end. Uh, whenever I Google, like I think I, I get too excited and like <laughs> it, it just, I, I do I do it too much. So um, and and it, it, it crashes my bandwidth. So, but all right, uh, let's do. Da, 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 da. Talked about the dermal identicals, the coloration, eyes are ringed in white. So I guess we can go to biology and ecology. Uh, the spirit tooth shark seems to be relatively sluggish in nature. Movie of the tides was a conserve of energy. I really, I like this detail. It's pretty interesting. Its activity levels are unaffected by day or night, reflecting a constant darkness on the environment. Now that is really cool because I'm pretty sure bull sharks are different. Like bull sharks, they are kind of affected by day or night. Like bull sharks tend to be in shallow water at night and deep water in daytime. Um, it's actually, and like uh, bull sharks tend to be more active at night too. So it's actually really cool to see this little detail where this species, spear tooth shark, um, seems to be uh, pretty even um, throughout, throughout the day um, or like throughout that 24 hour cycle. That's actually really cool. Well. Oh, this is cool. Small eyes and abundant ampullae of Lorenzini suggest that this shark relies more on electroreception than sight to hunt, while the large sec dorsal fin enhances its ability to maneuver at slow speeds in fast currents. That is so cool! Oh man, that's really cool. Wow. Now that's really cool um, because, you know, as much as. And I, I, I'm sorry I keep talking about bull sharks. It's just like bull sharks are a really good comparison species because they occupy such a similar dish. But bull sharks do spend quite a lot of time in, you know, the open ocean. Like they do, well, maybe not the open ocean, but like they do spend a lot of time like outside of river areas, outside of like, you know, estuary areas, like on the coast. Um, I mean, and, and they, they can go in deeper water too. And it's actually really interesting that a bull shark's physiology is maybe more adapted in a generalistic way, uh, whereas this species, spear tooth shark, might be more specialized for the river environment, um, which is why you see such a difference in that appearance, you know, with like the broader fins. That is so cool. Oh, that is so, so cool. I, lo I love like, I love nuances between sharks, you know, just like, man, it's, it's so cool. Um, let's see. It has slender teeth adapt for catching bony fishes and crustaceans, mostly on or near the bottom. Known prey of juveniles include uh, prawns. Ooh, these are interesting. Burrowing gobies, arid catfish, the threadfin, the gudgeon. I don't know these. I don't know these Australian fish. <laughs> um, I don't want to crash my internet, but I am curious what a gudgeon is. So I'm just going to check the gudgeon. I'm kind of curious what a gudgeon is. Oh, look at that. <laughs> that's a funny fish. It's, uh, yeah, all right. Well, that's what a gudgeon is. I did not know this. How many families? Oh, okay. Gotcha. We have cyprinids here in North America. I don't know about these other guys, but we do have cyprinids here. So, all right. Sorry. Nerding out. Uh, croakers and breams. Very little is known about the feeding habits of adults, but many bony fish spines and a stingray spine were found embedded in the jaws of the only documented adult female. 
As in other workroom sharks, the spear tooth shark is viviparous. Uh, when the developing embryo exhausts its supply of yolk, the yolk sac develops into a placental connection through which a mother delivers nourishment. So uh, most, uh, maybe all carcharinids, actually yeah, all carcharinids are viviparous. So burving seems to occur from October to December, so Australian summer, near the end of the dry season with newborns measuring 20 to 23 inches long or 50 to 59 centimeters long. A bond being captured, a female gave birth to a single fully developed pup, about 2.13 feet long, or 65 centimeters. Huh. Anecdotal inflammation indicates the litter size was six or seven. So that's a small, that's a small litter for, for, I mean, it's pro, it's, it's, it's kind of on the smaller side for, for, um, this group of sharks, so. But that's really interesting. I think we learned a lot about um, its biology, so that was really, really cool. So, um, <laughs> just catching up on the comments. Maple syrup lovers unite! Awesome. <laughs> um, is that true for the majority of sharks? I mean, the largest migration in the world takes place in the ocean every night. So it depends. Um, so that's a good point. Most, I would say, most sharks are nocturnal, but there's Quite a few exceptions. I kind of feel like hammerheads tend to be mixed, like like kind of both day and night. Um, but I, uh, you're right, Bruce. Like most most sharks do prefer nighttime um, for activity. But I think it does depend on the species, though. So uh, <laughs> let's see. Du, 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 du. Um, yep, just catching up on comments. Human interactions. Uh, spear tooth shark is not known to pose a danger to humans. Extremely rare, like other river sharks. It's, oh, wow. Its global population has been estimated to number no more than 2,500 mature individuals, with no more than 250 in any subpopulation. That is really scary, actually. That's like, when you think about it, like, as far as, like, think about, like, a human city, you know, like, or human settlement, that is, like, a, that's a small town, you know. It might be even, that's even like a high school. That's actually really sad. Um, that's a really, really small group. Um, this species is caught incidentally by commercial fisheries using gillnets and long lines, such as the Barramundi uh, fishery in Queensland. Signal number is also taken by anglers and both, uh, re recreational anglers and both bow fishers, or bow fishers, sorry. Uh, capture sharks might be eaten, used to bait crab pots, or discarded on land. Uh, habitat degradation uh, represents a third threat to the spear tooth shark. Uh, Fly River in Papua New Guinea has been severely affected by pollutants from mining activities, while proposed mining and dredging projects in the Port Musgrave area and uranium mining in Kakadu. Furthermore, in Australia has been listed as critically endangered on the 1999 Commonwealth Environment Protection and Biodiversity Conservation Act. Spear tooth shark is within the, scope, within the scope of the sawfish and river shark multi-species recovery plan made under the E. PBC Act. So that's actually really cool. Um, I've said it before, but Australia does a lot of great shark research and shark conservation programs. Um, so it's nice that this species is included within that. Um, Australia is definitely a leader in shark, or a global leader in shark research and conservation. So that's really cool. It's also been listed as vulnerable on the 2000 Territory Parks and Wildlife Conservation Act. Through management plan has yet to, though a management plan has yet to be enacted. Uh, sharks in the Kakadu and Lakefield National Parks are protected somewhat from habitat alteration, if not fishing. No regulations restrict the capture of the species in Papua New Guinea. Interesting. Wow. So this was actually a really great profile. This is, again, the Atlas of Living Australia. So um, usually, or not usually, but like uh, sometimes if you see collections like this, um, they're not as robust. But this was, this was really great. We got, we got a lot of great information here. So... Um, let's see, let's take a look at some photos. Took a look at that one. <laughs> um, I know this is fuzzy, but that's still, that's still kind of an awesome picture. Um, I know that's really fuzzy and it's like, you can barely see the shark, but if I had that picture, like, personally, I would, I would be very happy, you know. Again, one of the rarest sharks in the world. It's so cool. And just two pictures. Two pictures, so wow, it's, it's such a beautiful animal, and I love how I mean, we've seen enough sharks at this point where we, we could we can 
pick up on the differences and nuances and like you know it sounds really dumb but like every species is truly unique like you can pick up on little things here and there that distinguish it like again the broad fins uh the large second dorsal fin um the sort of i know they said blunt sound description but this is definitely a bit more there's something about the head that is a bit more elongate than a bull shark's and then like the first dorsal fin or sorry the first gill slit being longer so it's actually this is actually really cool so um i wonder if there's anything else we can get here oh interesting um i think that's probably looks like an older picture um yeah an older picture not really good resolution checking out names This one hiccup away from extinction. Yeah, yeah, it's, it, it freaks me out when we get closer to like, have you guys heard of vaquitas? You know, like the vaquita porpoise? I mean, like vaquitas, I'm, I swear like that that's gonna go extinct. Like, I don't know when, but like like in my lifetime, like, like vaquitas, I think there's only not even 50, 20 vaquitas left in the world. So um, it's like this, this species is probably getting closer to that. I mean, like, 2500's not horrible, but like it's still like really, really that's that's an alarmingly small population. Um, um, uh, Bruce, uh, it's important to remember many of these species survive for thousands of years of small populations like these. So there is um, I forget the term for this, um, but there is a good point where I think there is a minimum, and I forget the term for this. This is, this is like. I'm I'm trying to summon my undergraduate biology class where ah there there's a term for like the minimum number of of individuals you need in a population to have enough genetic diversity to successfully reproduce and maintain genetic diversity because if you have like if your genes are too close it's it's going to create a lot of like mutate like not mut like yeah. I guess deleterious mutations or like, like if, if the population is not diverse enough, you're, you're going to run into a lot more issues. Um, and I forget the term of like how many individuals of a certain species you need to make a population th like healthy. Um, I keep thinking of cheetahs. I think they're, I think cheetahs are a good example of, um, I don't know if I'm thinking of like genetic bottlenecking, but it's like cheetahs are a really good example or a very famous example of like, uh, there are some cheetah populations that are not genetically diverse enough, and so there's been conservation programs to try to like um, introduce diff like members of different cheetah populations um, like to each other so that they can improve genetic mixing, so they can improve genetic diversity. So um, let's see. So, uh, I, but I forget the term of that. But it, it, your comment made me think about that because um, like there is, I think that for each species, there's like a certain number you need in order to be like, like, like there's a certain number of individuals you need in order to maintain a healthy population with healthy growth um, and healthy genetic mix. So um, my true concern, however, my true concern is there are proximity to cities and towns that destroy habitat. Yes, I, I, I agree. Um, it's, it's tricky. Like uh, there's, there's uh, our minimum viable population. I think, I think you're right, Bruce. Sorry, uh, I just saw your comment on that. Um, yeah, it's tricky, uh, uh, Howard, like, um, there's some parts of the world that, you know, have either regulation in place or they have large areas of really undisturbed, like, coastline um, that, that, you know, helps with that. And then there's some parts of the world which don't have any of that, like, like, like highly developed coastline, no regulation whatsoever, because it's not really a priority um, for, for that particular, like, country or um so i'm concerned with that too um like like there's just sharks in certain parts of the world where it's like i i don't see a way you can mitigate it you know in terms of um especially like like with river sharks uh being it's nice that this species does uh, occupy coastal areas a little bit too because like we think of like river sharks that spend most, well, I mean, well, then again, if you think of river sharks that spend most of their time in rivers, like rivers are such like 
small environments comparatively to the ocean like like it's it's a smaller area you can't get away from fishing pressure you can't get away from like pollution as much as you can in the open sea um and so like it's like compounding the effects of human pollution or the effects of human interference so um i'm kind of rambling at this point but like like I, I agree. And it, th there's some places that have like regulation that helps with this. And there's some places that just like, they don't have it at all. And th that's, that's what I'm kind of concerned about in terms of like sharks that occupy areas that have like no, no one, no one's paying attention to their, their conservation by, you know, like or what they need. Um, so it's, it's tricky. Uh, I think it's a smaller cetacean species. Yes. Yeah, so Vaquita, uh, we could, we could look this up. I don't want to crash the internet, but, uh, <laughs> I should probably get a new computer, to be honest, at this point, so, uh, that's not a Vaquita, that is a Dugong, I don't know what that's doing there, um, yeah, we'll do World Wildlife Fund, um, so Vaquita, it's, it might be the smallest porpoise in the world, um, the world's rarest marine animal is on the edge of extinction. Uh, ten, indiv ten individuals, so it's ten individuals remaining. Got you. Uh, so critically endangered species. It lives uh, in the Gulf of California, uh, Baja California. Um, it's sad. This is definitely. This is this is. I, I'm ninety percent sure this will this will be extinct in in my lifetime. So, um, and I believe what. Uh, has happened is there is a fishery here for um, I wonder if they say it there's a fishery here there's a, there's a very uh, valuable fishery for tilapia what is it no am I saying that right legal fishing operations yeah okay I forget I forget the the name of the fishery um, like like in, in Mexico, but there's a fishery here that uh, vaquitas get caught up in that fishery, and it's just there. There's been attempts to help this species, but they have not been successful. And um, you know, I think it's just, and I, I believe vaquitas are actually very sensitive species too, um, as far as like capture goes. So I mean, like, I mean, like, you know, what what one animal isn't really, but. Um, so yeah, this, this is, as far as cetaceans go, this is definitely, um, or as far as marine animals go, this is like a big one in terms of this is probably going to be extinct in my lifetime. Um, as far as sharks go, uh, we fortunately don't have one extinct, um, but let's go check out, I used to have Redless really quick, just to kind of highlight critically endangered sharks, um, and also highlight an interesting feature on um, ISRM Redless in general. Uh, okay, I think I could do this. Let, let's go back to the home page. Okay, so ISRM Redless is awesome because it has um, assessments on most things. Not all things, but most things. Oh, sorry. I wanted advanced search. Okay. All right, we'll just do it this way. So um, what's really cool is that you can pull up a custom list of animals on the ice from red list. So I would like to pull up a custom list of critically endangered sharks. So I'm just going to go ahead and filter that. So sharks are in the animal kingdom, of course. Uh, in the phylum, they are chordata, so chordates. Uh, so those are vertebrates and also weird animals that like have a, a notochord. It's like that nervous system within the backbone. So lancelets and tunicates actually have a notochord. So um, they are chondrichthys, which is the cartilaginous fish. Oh, sorry. Uh, and then as far as sharks orders go, we've got carcarinoforms, uh, which are the ground sharks, so like the bull shark or our spear tooth shark tonight. Uh, we've got the squaliforms, like dogfish. We've got erectiloboforms, so those are the carpet sharks, like whale sharks. 
We got landiforms, which are the uh, mackerel sharks, like great whites. Uh, Squatini forms, which are the angel sharks. Uh, Hexanchi forms, which are like the prehistoric sharks, like the um, the uh, frilled shark and the uh, six gill sharks. Pristiophore forms, which are the saw sharks. And then heterodontiforms, which are the bullhead sharks, such as the adorable Port Jackson shark, um, the the one of the cutest sharks on the stream. Um, and then just to kind of point out these other cartilaginous fish that we're not going to select, there's ragiforms, which are like... so. Oh, actually, wait, hold on. <laughs> okay, this is going to... That was really cool for five seconds, and I kind of forget... Ragiforms is a ray, but I forget what kind of ray those are. And like, same with myelobatiforms. Those are rays. I forget exactly what kind of rays those are. Rhinopristiforms are saltfish. Torpediniforms are torpedo rays. And then chimeriforms are chimeras. So, but we're not going to select those. And then we're going to check out the red list category. So I want to see critically endangered. Um, what's really cool to see as far as sharks go is that there's no extinct shark. There's no extinct in the wild shark. There's no regionally extinct shark, but there are 35 critically endangered sharks. So we're going to check out this list. So we've got the... I wish I could make this bigger, actually. Can I... Okay. Um, I, I, I'm not going to try to make this bigger because I don't want to screw it up. So. so we've got the angel shark, Squatina Squatina. Sand tiger shark, which we talked about on an earlier stream. That, this this really breaks my heart because this is this is one in my backyard. It's just sad. Uh, great hammerhead, uh, taupe. Uh, we talked about the taupe a couple um, weeks ago. The Indonesian angel shark. I don't think I've heard of that. Scalped hammerhead, oceanic white tip, hidden angel shark, uh, humpback smoothhound, Chilean angel shark. You can see a pattern with angel sharks. Um, there's an angel shark um, in the uh, Atlantic coastline of North America, the Sand Devil, I think that was stream number three, which is actually doing okay, so that gives hope for angel sharks, but uh, the Dagono Shark, Ganges Shark, which is another Glyphus, so this is the same genus as the Spiritooth Shark, which we are talking about tonight. Uh, dwarf Gulpo Shark. Gulpo Sharks are actually a really cool group. Um, like, that's an interesting deep water group. Uh, Indian Swell Shark, Articulated Swell Shark, Scoop Head Shark, Striped Smooth Hound, Sarawak Pygmy Swell Shark, there's a specific shark that I'm actually looking for. Um, I think it's good to go through this list, but there's a specific one, this one, the lost shark. So let's go ahead and pull this up. So as far as shark extinction goes, this is probably the one that is the closest to extinction. Um, it has not been verifiably extinct yet, but there's a reason it's named the lost shark or Carcharhinus obsoletus. Um, so it's critically endangered. They, uh, oh my gosh, zero to 49 individuals uh, estimated. Um, it's been seen only a very few times. And some of those times have been like fish markets. So um, it's, it is like, it's, it's tricky. It, you, you, it, I think there was a point where um, scientists thought it was gone and then it popped up in a fish market one day, and it was like, "Oh, we still have this species." So um, that that's how rare it, this that's how rare it is. So as far as shark extinction, this is probably the one I would say maybe is the closest to extinction. Um, but it's so rare, and it's like so um, it, it's 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 hard to kind of make that call whether or not it actually is gone. So um, it's a pretty legendary name. Um, I don't know, have you guys heard of this shark, the lost shark, or Carcharhinus obsoletus? Um, let's see. And I'm so sorry, I kind of went on a really long tangent, so let's see. Do, do, do. Yes, so um, I just saw your comment, Bruce, uh, about commercial fishing. Yeah, I, I it's tricky because, um, like, fishing is very tricky because there's aspects of it that you know are part of a culture and an economy but i do agree as far as like shark concert and me personally like like as a life choice i i really don't try to get seafood you know just because it's like and like i i don't i don't judge you know if, if, if you know people for you know if you eat seafood and stuff like if i'm a guest somewhere i'll have it but like but I'm very, very wary of, you know, where is this thing sourced and like what kind of damage is it causing? Because like, I, I agree, like I like commercial fishing 
is by far the biggest threat to sharks. Like bycatch from commercial fishing is the biggest threat. Um, I also think it's not talked about as much as it should be because I think, at least in America, the narrative on sharks is that sharks are misunderstood and if we understand them more, we can help them more. But I, I think that's kind of like not really hitting the issue. I think the issue is like, no, sharks are victims of bycatch. Like sharks, you know, really get caught up in a lot of commercial fishing operations. And that's probably the biggest thing that's like impacting them negatively. But it's a controversial issue because, you know, fish commercial fishing is part of an economy and part of a livelihood for people. And it's a very controversial, it's a very complicated um, issue. But but I, I, I'm, I have a similar stance in terms of like, I really you know like if, if you had if you had to ask me what is the most important thing or the most negative thing that's impacting sharks I, it's fishing like like the like you know like i would say even more than maybe habitat um degradation it's, it's it really is fishing and a lot of habitat degradation is due to fishing like like a lot of habitat modification is due to like shrimp farming um so yeah i i, I just want to shout out to that because like i i agree like it's it's the biggest negative impact on sharks so um, I agree, but at the same time, they should be prevented from introducing more chemicals to these farm. And that's a good point, Howard, because yes, um, uh, like chemicals for land farms, um, in the Chesapeake Bay in particular, that's actually a really big conservation issue, um, because there's a thing that happens, I, I, I mean, it happens everywhere, but I think it's very famous in uh, my part of the world in the Chesapeake Bay called eutrophication, where there's a lot of chemical runoff in the water and it really stimulates the growth of algae in the bay and when that happens uh, all that algae kind of explodes into a bloom and it blocks sunlight from reaching other parts of the bay like seagrass or um like like i mean like seagrass is like the best example and it has this cascading effect where it's actually denying the bay nutrients and you start crashing out, like, like like certain fisheries or like certain certain groups of animals like start kind of like falling up like 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 they, they are not getting what they need it starts having this um compounding effect in the food chain um and the bay has had you know crashing stocks of like striped bass um oysters are very famous uh blue crabs and some of those have come back which is great through like regulation and and very mindful fishing practices um some of it is still not there yet oysters are still not there yet so um but let's see it still shocks me that sand tigers are critically endangered. Yeah, like that was that 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 really hurt. Yeah, good good call, Roy, because that that one really got me too. Like it just it's just like, ugh, ugh. I, w I really was not expecting that, you know, because um, that was that was a shark I've worked with, you know, like like that was a shark that I, in my lifetime, like you know, that status changed pretty dramatically. So, um, hopefully we'll see more sand tigers being bred in captivity. Yes, so uh, fortunately, sand tigers are extremely easy to keep in large aquariums, like public aquariums. So um, I believe there are some, I think we did talk about it on the sand tiger stream, there are some captive breeding programs. So um, yeah, so sorry, they, uh, like that was, that's a lot of, um, it's, there's a lot, I mean, clearly, like as, as we're talking, um, and I really, really love this conversation because it's like, again, I think there's, I think not everybody knows really what sharks need and like what's going on with sharks. And again, like the narrative I've seen most of the time is like sharks are misunderstood. And it's like, that's not the issue. <laughs> like it's, it doesn't matter. Like it's not that they're, I mean, it does matter, but like, it's not that they're misunderstood. It's everything that we are all talking about right now. Like, like, like on the stream and also like, hold on. Can I start? Like, let me do, let me give you guys stars. Cause like, I really appreciate this dialogue like you guys you guys are awesome and um we're really growing like a really great community because like like you, i mean we all care about sharks and we all care about like what's going on with them and what they need so um cheers guys like uh actually i'll cheers with my cup of tea so i don't know if you heard about this but a friend told me you can't cheers with water um, like cheering cheersing with water is bad luck apparently so cheersing with a cup of tea so oh man uh, maybe someday, I don't know about next week, uh, it's up to you guys, uh, we can maybe talk about the lost shark, that will be an interesting one, but I'll leave it up to you guys. Uh, let's go back to, uh, I want to take a quick peek at the the critically endangered list, uh, Just I just want to see if I missed anything. 
Um, and then we'll go back to our Glyphus. I'm actually really curious why IUCRA list lists it just as vulnerable as opposed to critically endangered. So, oh, uh, I just saw something really interesting, but let me check really quick. Oh, small tail sharks critically endangered. That's another one. That's that's a rare one, um, kind of in my part of the world. But that's that's I did not know that. So that's wild. Uh, the one I kind of freaked out about is this guy, the Pondicherry shark. Uh, so Pondicherry shark is another one where it's like that might be the next one. Uh, Lost shark and Pondicherry shark. Those are the two that I would say possibly the most endangered, um, if I had to pick. So. Those are, it's a similar scenario. Uh, they're, they're two species that we've really, really, really have not seen in a while, and then it pops up again, so we can't say it's an extinct yet, but um, I would, like, those, these two are probably the, I would say the rarest, I, I, I like, as far as, like, like, or the ones closest to extinction, so, um, so I just wanted to point that one out, so. Um, but let's go back to let's go back to river sharks. I'm vi or uh, the spear tooth shark. I'm very very curious as to how IUCN red list got to this assessment, which is vulnerable, which is not as bad. So let's check that out in detail. Okay, spear tooth shark, medium sized, has Apache and relatively restricted distribution in northern Australia, it's, uh, Papua New Guinea. Uh, habits tropical macrotidal rivers, estuaries and coastal waters. Previously thought to be very rare, recent surveys in Australia and uh, Papua New Guinea have revealed that the species occurs in higher abundance and in greater number of rivers and estuaries than previously thought. Okay. The vast majority of records are neonates and juveniles from within rivers, while adults are known from only a handful of records. Excuse me. It displays a high degree of population structuring, increasing the vulnerability of subpopulations to local threats. Uh, the application of close kin mark recapture to the Wenlock River and rivers of the Van D uh, Diemen Gulf have revealed a low adult population size. Uh, according to the remainder of the species distribution, including newly discovered parts of its range, the adult population size is estimated to be greater than 2,500, but less than 10,000 mature individuals. Okay, so this is interesting. This is a little bit better than what we were seeing. It's still a very small town, though, but... Although a protected species in Australian waters, it is subject to incidental capture and commercial fisheries and some illegal recreational retention. In Papua New Guinea, it is retained for its mean and fins in largely unregulated fisheries. Based on current levels of threat, a continued decline of at least 10% is projected over the next three generation lengths, and a spear tooth shark is assessed as vulnerable. So that's interesting. So if I'm reading this correctly, it looks like we originally thought... Oh, look at this, look at this. So in 2000, it was listed as endangered. In 2009, it was listed as endangered. And in 2021, it changed to vulnerable, which is, that's nice. I like that. <laughs> um, and the Sharks of the World book that we read at the top of the stream, um, that was published in 2021. So it looks like the Sharks of the World book was um, uh referencing this this 2009 endangered assessment and since then IUCN red list has re-examined this the spear tooth shark and said well we're seeing more of them than we originally thought we're estimating more of them than when we originally thought so that makes me happy um it's still not a great picture but you know that's actually pretty amazing i like i really get excited when we see improvements in status um like uh, I think, I mean, Sand Devil's kind of an example. It's kind of cheating because it's like, it went from data deficient to least concern. But going from endangered to vulnerable, that's, I, I'll take it. We, we take those. You know, that's, that's, I, you know, fingers crossed. I, I, I appreciate that. Maybe this is not as in bad a shape as we originally thought. So I appreciate that. I'm kind of curious to see any conservation programs going on. Um, there should be a place here talking about that let's see oh sorry my screen kind of went off a little bit they need help not shrink yeah <laughs> i appreciate that howard yeah yeah i i agree it's weird um this is this is gonna sound a little weird but like i just 
it's so strange. Like, I think the... Um, because we have, you know, when you think about the shark conservation mindset, we had Jaws, which is in the 70s, and Jaws, like, demonized sharks. And so that was, like, the thing, I guess, throughout the 70s, maybe 80s. And then the 80s started to push back against Jaws, and there was, like, conservation, like, like, um, like underwater, um, what do you call it? Like nature documentaries, um, like like Jacques Cousteau, early, very early. I don't know if Dave Attenborough did a lot. I mean, like I know that Dave Attenborough has done a lot um, in that time frame. I don't know how much he's done marine stuff pre Blue Planet, but but you know, so we have that narrative pushing back against Jaws. So I think maybe it started sincerely in terms of like the whole um, you know sharks are misunderstood. But, you know, that whole thing, the sharks are misunderstood, like, it's carried on through the 90s and the 10s, and I, I just, yeah, I, I agree with, I agree, like, in terms of, like, they need help, not a shrink, where it's like, I, I just think it's odd that it's still, at least, I, I, it's been a while since I've seen a full Shark Week season, but, like, I thought it was really odd that, you know, 2010's Shark Week and, early, like, even some of the 2020 Shark Week, it's still, like, does that like that whole like sharks oh i don't know why my screen is going nuts the sharks are misunderstood thing it's just like no i the, okay yeah we get it you know we've talked about it for decades now like what do they need conservation wise so yeah sorry i just i, I just um I, extrapolate on your point like I, I i agree you know i think i think in the 80s and maybe 90s you know sharks are misunderstood is like a fair narrative but then like now it's like okay we get it yes what do they need you know the focus should be on like what do they need so um as you said they only discovered the adult population in 2014 yeah so um it is cool that that lines up so maybe you know maybe with that discovery um that's helped positively informed this uh, red list assessment so i don't know um let's check out some conservation actions in terms of like uh because we we talked about like australia had a couple things going on let's see what specifically like how that helps um oh that's interesting okay in australia the species is listed as critically endangered on the commonwealth environmental um uh, the EPBC Act. However, this listing was undertaken when the species was considered to be extremely rare and possibly thought to be extinct in part of its historic Australian range. A recent reassessment demonstrates that the species does not meet the criteria for a listing as critically endangered. It recommends a downlisting to vulnerable. Well, that's interesting. Uh, listing on the EPBC Act means the species is a matter of national environmental significance as protected under the Act. Uh, the species is subject to a national multi-species recovery plan which aims to improve the population status and ensure anthropogenic activities do not hinder recovery. Okay. Ooh, uh, it's a no-take species under the Fisheries Act of 1998, so that's good. So you can't fish the shark, that's good, in the Northern Territory. Okay, in Queensland, same thing, no-take species. Interesting. So there's parts of Australia where it's like, okay, you can't fish for this. And I appreciate that. That's awesome. Uh, Papua New Guinea, there's no species specific regulation. Given its recent documentation in Western Australia, there is a need for legislative protection in that jurisdiction. There's also a need for targeted surveys in the Byzant River, Queensland, to confirm its presence, absence there since the last records are prior to 1983. So, um,. Just want to highlight that really quick. Um, so, uh, da, 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 da. so Bruce, uh, some one thing we talked about a lot on the stream is like there is so much to still study with sharks. Um, so, like, I just want to like kind of highlight this. Like, this is yet one of, I, I think we've had dozens of examples now where it's like there is still a need for shark research. You know, like if you're ever if you're ever interested in like shark research or like pursuing that as a career. I mean, you know, there's plenty of things to look for. 
and plenty of things to like study and, and um, do research for. So it's actually really cool that there's a research need for this species, that there's also a, tar a need for targeted surveys in the Bison River, Queensland, to confirm its presence absence there. So that's actually really cool. So I just want to uh, kind of point that out. Um, and it's really exciting because um, I think, I think uh, there's a lot of great things that are out here now where like we have so much like media on sharks and like so much coverage on sharks in a lot of ways but um and i think sometimes that um mistakenly imparts this idea of like oh we know everything about them and the reality is no we're not even close there's so much to learn still so um, i just think it's really exciting uh so i just wanted to kind of point that out and to any future viewers uh, any future viewers if you're interested in shark research my goodness there's a lot to study <laughs> like I think there's still decades of fields, um, like, like probably more to study. So there's a lot to do. So, uh, species distribution models. Oh, and also, sorry, one more thing. I'm kind of rambling, but, um, sharks are, you know, charismatic megafauna. They're infamous for being so famous. And as far as science goes and as far as like research goes, like, I think marine biologists, you know, maybe get discouraged in terms of like, should I study sharks? I mean, they're so covered. There's so many shark scientists, blah, blah, blah. And the answer is yes, go for it. You know, if you want to, if you really, really want to study sharks, like go for it. Like there's plenty of research that needs to still be done. So uh, species or species models have suggested the species also occurs in uns unsurveyed locations. Surveys should utilize appropriate methods and target species preferred salinity and turbidity ranges. More urgent is the implementation of effective management measures in Papua New Guinea. Interesting. So, well, wow. now we covered. We're covering a lot on this on this species. So, um, da, 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 da. Uh, let's see. So I'm just catching up on comments. Uh, kind of bug out watching Shark Week because of the amount of jaws appeal that tends to feature, which annoy me quite a bit. Same here. Yeah, um, uh, Roy Roy. Same here. Like, um, it's weird. It's like there's a mix of like. There's a mix of good shows with like legitimate shark scientists, and there's just a mix of junk, and it drives me nuts. Like, <laughs> oh man, I think I think the one, um, like, uh, the one that kind of drives me nuts. I, I kind of feel bad saying this, but like, um, the great white serial killer one drives me insane because it's like it's 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 not a serial killer. It's an animal. It just it's it just it's a white shark. It just it just. It, it, it doesn't have a motive, you know? <laughs> like, yeah, it just it drives me nuts. But I hate the title of that show. Um, hey, hey, Bruce, I've always have been. I'm currently finishing my bachelor's of applied science degree. I'm hoping to create a fish farm to help reduce fishing. Dude, 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 that's so awesome. Starting that. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. That is super, super, super cool. Good on you, man. Good on you, man. Cheers, Cheers to that. that. Um, man, that's, man, that's so, so cool. cool. Dude, shout, shout, shout out to that. that. Uh, yeah, man. This is a good community, community man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, cheers to that. Actually, that's actually, really cool. I got my, uh, my, uh, yeah, my yeah, so this is, this is the, uh, yeah. Cheers, cheers, cheers man. man. Like, um, like um, this is the, uh, I got this got literally from the Green Lab in Florida. Florida. This is one of the most, uh, uh famous shark uh, labs, labs in the United States. States. So, um, also, this is really random, but, like, you guys ever noticed that, like, Oh, the logos on the mugs are on the wrong side. Like, don't, don't you want to like have the, mo the logo on this side so you can kind of show people what, what you're representing? Because it's like, I know it's mode. It doesn't need to face me. It needs to face the world. Like, I don't know. Random gripe, but... <laughs> Alright. So. Uh, Great Whites. Oh, shoot. I, uh, audio is wonky. Sorry about that, guys. Yeah, I don't know. Um, let me know if it's back again. Um... Great white seal killer is an eye roll. Yeah, yeah, I can't stand it. Uh, way too special to be going for almost 40 years. They're just trying to be dramatic. Yeah, yeah. And it's a, it's a sh it's a shame because, um, dude, 90s Shark Week was awesome. Uh, early 2000s Shark Week, kind of probably awesome too. You know, like I think early 2000s was pretty good. Um, and I can't remember really late 2000s. I don't think I paid attention to it. But then like in the tens. Um, and specifically 2013, that stupid Megalodon thing, like, that that really sent it off. I think that's a turning point. Like, like the Megalodon thing was, like, um, the, like that two, 2013, I'm not even going to call it a documentary, but that 2013 show on Megalodon was a really, really big turning point for, like, okay, Shark Week got crazy. This is dumb. Like, like this, is, this is really, really bad. So, um, you know what's fascinating is, like, 
many channels kind of went this way. Like, I think Discovery Channel in general got more reality show like. Um, History Channel's a really bad example, too. Like, like that, that got more like weird reality show stuff. Like, because History Channel used to have some awesome things. History Channel had like History's Mysteries and um, like Haunted History, which, like, you know, it is ghost stuff, but it's also like Planet. Um, and then it's like, I don't know what it's doing now. Like, it's got, it's just, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta get uh, Crocodile Hunter DVDs, by the way. I have to, I have to get those, because uh, I don't think you could stream Crocodile Hunter, but that was amazing. That show was incredible, so. Uh, they do have some great programs on fossil sharks. Yes, um, oh shoot, there's a really, I forget the name of it. There's a really good one that, I, I shouldn't pull it up because it shouldn't be on YouTube, but there is a really good one that's like, <laughs> illegally uploaded to YouTube. Um, I forget the name of it though, but uh, even so the good shark material out there far surpasses the info when I was young. That's a good point. Um, that's a good point, Howard, because like um, a good example for positive, uh, a positive show that's kind of modern is uh, Alien Sharks. Uh, Alien Sharks was a show that like it, there was a lot of garbage during that season of Shark Week, but Alien Sharks was the one save, or one of the few saving graces, where it's like Alien Sharks had a really good platform for little-known species, um, and some really cool scientists. Like uh, Vicky Vasquez is a really cool scientist. Um, I think Ebert was on it. David A. Ebert. Um, I think that was him. Uh, that's a really important name in shark science. So um, there was. I think there was one more that I really liked, and I can't remember what it was. I can't remember, but um, let's see. My favorite, my absolute favorite. Let me, let me. Uh, I'm gonna write this in the chat. Like the, I think. Okay. So my absolute favorite documentary, and I think to date might be the best shark documentary i've ever seen it might be outdated a little bit now but the ultimate guide to sharks 1996 it was part of this ultimate guide series uh, it was a huge impact on my life where it's like it was epic it was so good it, it like had a really cool range of biodiversity and it covered uh quite quite a few topics from like i think the cutting edge thing at the time was greenland shark footage greenland sharks were like really really rare and it was i think it showcased like the first footage of greenland sharks by underwater photographer nick kalianis is a very uh, famous underwater uh, photographer for sharks so um they had that they had like you know uh, a cool little thing on shark evolution um adaptations like how sharks hunt um like how sharks made shark science uh like in conservation uh, it is the coolest thing, and it was so tense. Like, like the, um, like that. The atmosphere of that documentary was like so. Like, this is a legendary animal, and like I love that atmosphere. It was so respectful of, of what sharks are, and like so. Um, ven it, it really venerated sharks. Uh, like you know, n no weird pop stuff. It was like this really cool. Like, we are going on a journey into the legend that is these animals. Like, it is super, super cool. Um, I don't know where you can watch it now, but that's the name of it, Ultimate Guide to Sharks. I definitely recommend it. It's super, super cool. So, um, yeah, it was just, sorry. That was, that was probably my favorite, favorite documentary I've seen so far on sharks. So, um, we're getting, uh, we still have a, a bit of time left, uh, but this is probably a good time to think about, um, uh, species for next week so if you guys have any recommendations on a shark to cover next week uh let me know in the chat and we'll we'll pick that out uh the shark documentary that ran uh, sorry the shark gen documentary that really resonated with me when i was a kid was the show american sharks i think it Ooh, american sharks i don't think i've seen that roy american sharks let's see nice to see a good documentary of shark culture yeah that would be actually really cool do you know what actually had a kind of fun one is um Wait, let me look up American Sharks really quick. And I'm sorry, I, I'm screwing up our audio so much, but... Um, another one... American Sharks. Shark documentary. Looks like there's a rock band that's called American, American Sharks. Shark documentary. 
Various group of shark. Shark Week American Shark. Oh, cool. Wait a minute. Excuse me. Journey around the coast of the U.S. in search of shark life from the deep ocean, the coral reef, the shallow waters, and even favorite beaches. Find out why some species justify visual fears and discover others that are rarely seen. I gotta check that out. Hey, that's actually really cool. Thanks, Roy. That one's really cool. I gotta check that out. I've never heard of that. Um, like, I definitely want to check that out. So, awesome. Um, the other one I was going to mention is, because um, Howard, you reminded me about uh, so shark culture documentaries. Um, this is going to sound weird because I think this is kind of for everyone. It's sort of maybe for kids, but not really. It's the DK Eyewitness series. Um, like, th these are kind of odd, but in a good way. Like, actually, you know what? Wait a minute. <laughs> Hold on. Let's actually check this out. Because now that I think about it, I think this is actually literally on YouTube. Like, and like you could totally watch it, and it's free. And um, let's check it out. This is, this is a very charming... Yep, there you go. Okay. So... For, oh, no, not that. Not that. Wait a minute. Not beyond wildlife. I thought DK actually... Well, maybe DK did do this. I guess they renamed it Beyond Wildlife. Okay. All right, anyway. So, um, DK... Um, Doris Kingsley? I forget what... No. I forget what DK means, but it's like DK Publishing. Um, I don't know if you guys grew up with the Eyewitness books uh, when you were kids. I, I, I definitely grew up with these books as a kid. Um, like, uh, they were actually really beautiful. Uh, they're technically like children's books, but they're actually really, they're actually really beautiful introductions. They're kind of like little museum collections, like these picture books. Um, but uh, there's a really great series in the 90s called the DK Eyewitness series, and they have a wide range of topics from like the human body to cats to dinosaurs to sharks. Um, so uh, they actually do a really good job. It's, it's a really very pleasant series to watch. Um, so I definitely recommend it. Um, like if you ever want to watch something that's like, you'll, you'll definitely learn something and it's also very relaxing and um, kind of like, <laughs> kind of nostalgic. It's very, it's very 90s, but in a good way. Like, like really, I mean, like, there's no bad way to be 90s, but, like, it's very 90s in a very, like, nostalgic, like, I just want to, like, tuck in and watch a nice documentary. Uh, the DK Eyewitness series is really good. The Shark one is really good. Um, they have some beautiful footage, and um, they do pay uh, homage to shark culture. So they talk about, um, like, I think Polynesian gods uh, and, like, I think Greek mythology a little bit uh, as far as sharks go, so... Um, and this is literally it. I have it on the screen right now, but um, Beyond Wildlife. Actually, let me make sure I'm like subscribed to this really quick. I'm subscribed to this white, right? Okay, I am. Yeah. It's really weird because I think. I thought DK literally made this. Like, I thought this was actually definitely like sponsored by DK. So I don't know if Beyond Wildlife is like DK rebranding or if that's like some random person who kind of maybe illegally uploaded all this so <laughs> but um it is a good series and just just go for it if, if you want something kind of pleasant and relaxing to watch um it's it's really good so um let's see so one on fossils is excellent yeah uh so Roy, Roy i read an eyewitness book back in 2005 about sharks i think i had that one when i was a kid and then howard still have one on fossils that is excellent yeah, they're really, they're really good. Like, like, they're very, like, 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 whoever designs those books or designed those books did a really great job. Like, like, they're not, like, they're not Mickey Mouse. They're, they're very, like, they're very intentionally, really beautifully laid out. They're actually, I think, I think compared to, like, it's like a museum collection, but, you know, that anyone can read. Like, like, you know, like, like, even, like, little kids can read and kind of understand it. I think, I think that's probably a good way to describe those kinds of books, so... Um, let's see, we're about 20 minutes away from 11, but, um, I had a couple, I think I had one more Australian thing, I just want to, 
on the spear tooth shark. I just want to check it out really quick. Um, but let me know uh, if you guys have suggestions for next week's shark. Um, this is the Australian government, <laughs> Department of Climate Change, Energy, the Environment, and Water. So let's, I'm just going to scan this really quick and kind of see if there's anything interesting that we haven't learned yet on this species. So. I just saw this comment. Uh, Bruce, one of my favorites is a very short guide to marine biology. The very short guide series is always great. Oh, I got I have never heard that one. I gotta check that out. Very short guide. So we got American Shark and Very Short Guide. Um Let's see what that is. Is it this one? Oh, that's cool. Ooh, Oxford. That's actually really cool. Oxford Press. Is it? Is it uh, this one, Bruce? I don't know if I can look inside. I think Amazon got rid of its look inside feature, or... I've been trying... There's been a couple of books I was, like, looking at lately, and I was trying to do the look inside thing, and it, would, it wouldn't really let me, so... Oh, cool. Okay, so that, that was it. I, I definitely have to check that out, then. Um, let's see... This is random. Do you guys have uh, Kindles? Because um, I actually, I used to have one, but I, I kind of prefer like physical books. Um, what do you guys think? Do you prefer physical books or like Kindles uh, or like um, I guess e-readers? No, not e-readers. Are they called e-readers? Like tablets? I don't know. <laughs> I'm like I'm kind of kind of dating myself at this point. So, but um, I I used to have a Kindle and I just didn't really. <laughs> I started reading on it, and then I was like, you know what? I, I kind of want to hack this and play Elder Scrolls on it. So that's what I did in college. I hacked my Kindle to play not like Skyrim, but like the much older Elder Scrolls games. Like, so bad. That is not how that technology should have been used. But mm -hmm. physical books. Um, yep, same here, Howard. Uh, Roy Roy likes both. Um... Law Shark or Thresher Shark? Ooh, that's a good toss-up um, for next week. Let's see. Let's take a vote. I'm cool either way. With the Law Shark, it's like a really cool mysterious shark. It's also maybe going to be kind of depressing in some ways, like as far as the conservation goes, because it literally might be the closest one to extinction. The Thresher Shark, um, I think Thresher Sharks are doing... Re I mean, let's see how they're doing, actually, before I say anything further. Um, thresher shark probably will have more footage, um, and we've never done one before. There's a couple species of thresher, so I'm cool either way. Um, uh, Roy, Bruce, uh, have you done... Can Kindle run Minecraft? Oh, Roy, Roy, I think... I wonder if Kindle can, actually. I wonder if Kindle can. Maybe. I don't know. I played Elder Scrolls Arena on Kindle, which I really should not have done, because I, I hacked... I uploaded like ms dos to my kindle this is back in college this is back when i should have been studying but like um i think i am uploaded like ms dos to my kindle um bruce likes both for reading um great hammer oh wow okay great hammerhead sickle fin lemon law shark might have trouble finding images um we haven't done the great hammerhead yet that would be a cool one uh, we haven't done sickle fin lemon either um, that would also be a really cool one. Shoot, these are really good. Uh, can I do polls? Can I actually do that? Uh, I don't know if I can. Let's see. Let's check out... Let's check out... I'm going to check out the conservation status of each one really quick. So... Thresher Shark. Elopius vulpinus is the Thresher. Okay, so Common Thresher is vulnerable. 
and we'll probably get a lot of footage on it. So um, there's that. Uh, Sicklefin Velement Shark is Nega Prion. Breva Rostris? No. Acute. No? Oh, wait a minute. Did they change the name on this? Sharp Tooth Lemon Shark? Is that. Wait a minute. I'm just gonna check this really quick. I'm actually really curious if they change the name on that, the sickle from Lemon Shark, so. Excuse me. Okay, Lemon Shark is Negaprion Brevorostris. Sickle fin Lemon Shark is Negaprion Acutidens, which is this guy, but it's renamed Sharptooth Lemon Shark. Okay, interesting. So we got that one that's endangered. And then Great Hammerhead, I know, is critically endangered, but we'll pull it up anyway. We'll get a lot of footage on Great Hammerhead, Serena Macaron. We did do this. We did the Bonnet Head recently. Um, let's see. Critically endangered Great Hammerhead. Let's see. Yeah, common names are. Da, 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 da. All right, let's see. This is this is interesting. I think we should set up like a queue because um, that that actually be pretty helpful anyway. Here, let me make a let me write this down really quick. Let's do. I'm gonna I'm gonna think about this. Let's do. Hmm. I'm thinking. Let's do, as a good playlist, let's do Thresher Shark first. I think Thresher Shark next week might be kind of cool because I think we'll get a lot of footage and I think it will be like, it'll be kind of cool to go back to Lamniforms really quick. And then we'll do the Great Hammerhead. Um, just, just welcoming Bruce to our channel. So I think Great Hammerhead the week after will be really cool. And then the Sicklefin Lemon Shark, I think, will be a nice way to kind of round it out. I think it'll be really nice to look. I think that that will be a good playlist. What do you guys think? So let's do. Um, I think that'll be kind of fun because we'll go back to Laminiforms and then we'll do a Hammerhead and then we'll do. Yeah, actually, that might be that might be the coolest order. OK, awesome. Yeah, because uh, with our uh, Spear Tube Shark tonight, um, it is a Carcarine. Uh, it is like like a Carcarine. So it'll be kind of cool to go around and then come back to a Carcharinid. So, awesome, all right. So, uh, Thresher Shark, great hammerhead. I'm gonna call it a Sicklefin Lemon Shark because that, that, is ex uh, that is exactly what I grew up with. So, Sicklefin Lemon Shark, so awesome. All right, we got a good playlist. That's a really good mix, actually. <laughs> so, um, we're 12 minutes to 11, so I'm going to probably wrap it up for tonight, but let's, go back I just want to end on the uh, spear tube shark footage here we go so thank you guys so much for oh, actually yeah that's there we go sorry about that thank you guys so much for joining um, this was a really cool stream um, and this was a really great shark to talk about tonight uh, I learned a lot personally I didn't know that um, the uh, spear tube shark uh, there's like we kind of have an understanding Oh, are these streams recorded? Yes. Um, so, uh, Bruce, uh, on the channel, if you subscribe to Dr. Jaws, um, you'll see... Let me actually show this really quick. Um, do, 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 do. And actually, I, let me show off something, guys, really quick, because I'm starting to organize this. I'll, I'll get better at it, but... Um, I'm sorry. Inception. It, 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 it always... It's kind of wild, like, seeing the... Like, this is the live stream, and, like, um, you know, it, we're on the live... It's, it's streamception. But anyway, so, yes, all the live videos are recorded. So, um, I was talking about this at the top of the stream. Look at that! The Angler Rough Shark! That got 118 views. Again, it's we have a tiny channel, but, like, compared to all the other streams, I don't know what happened with this guy, but that, that, that got a lot, <laughs> comparatively. So, that was actually really cool to see. So, um, so, yes, we have all the streams recorded. 
Um, this one is actually really cool. My buddy Connor McDonald, Dr. Connor McDonald, was on this one. Um, so that was more like an interview stream on the Nurse Shark. Um, and one thing that I was doing on the channel, and I'll continue to do this, is um, I have a stream playlist, but uh, we also have a, um, a order playlist. So this is a mix of our live streams and then also uh, some of my favorite pieces of footage um, on YouTube. They're not mine. They're just they're just pieces of footage from really cool channels like Dibrem or um, Blue Bay that have really beautiful videos on uh, some of the species that we talked about. So I put them in this like playlist too. But like these are. Um, different shark orders. So I made a Carcharinoform playlist, I made a Lamnoform playlist, and I'll keep making playlists on the other shark orders. Um, I haven't really had a chance to uh, organize like or like to Lobiforms or Squaliforms, so. But go ahead and, um, all right, I, I, it sounds like you're already a subscriber um, already, but um, we have all the streams recorded in the live section, and then we have standard videos, and that's my, that's my whole plug for the channel today, so. <laughs> um, but, uh, let's end with an image of Glyphus Glyphus. Oh, gallery. I think gallery has the image. So, uh, well, actually, no. Let's, let's end with that video. Uh, I don't want to end on an image of like a captured Glyphus. So, we'll end on this really cool video from. There we go. All right. There we go. So, all right. <laughs> Thanks so much, guys. Um, I hope you guys have a really uh, great uh, rest of your week. Um, if anybody else is a fellow Zelda fan, I hope you enjoy Tears of the Kingdom. It's coming out Friday. I am definitely going to geek out and uh, just play that. So, so, although what's really funny, I probably sound like more of a video gamer than I really am. Um, I, I devote more time to like writing and like hiking and swimming and like doing these streams as opposed to like playing video games so i probably will not get that far in tears of the kingdom but anyway if you guys are zelda fans hope you have a fun friday and um we'll come back next week for the thresher shark and i'm sorry howard i just saw your comment alopius vulpinus uh so we'll do the classic thresher i'll leave this here alopius vulpinus oops sorry so this is the common thresher this is like the the uh, the classic classic thresher shark uh, which will probably get like a lot of cool footage uh, for that so thanks guys thanks for Roy I really appreciate it uh, thanks again Bruce and welcome to the stream really happy to have you here and I uh, hope you guys have like a really good rest of your week so take care and thanks again for joining man <laughs> or guys I don't know I'm being weird happy Friday or Monday ah I it's Monday <laughs> take care guys bye